flat and then just a little bit of power up she goes no problems at all a little bit of wheel slip there as you can see but system traction control systems control it and just allow us to climb the hill as easily as that next obstacle a little bit interesting so uh, just easing the car in nice and slowly so uh, just easing it forward nice and gently on the brake. We have the hill descent control system on the car, so I'm just going to lower that to its minimum speed so when we start to descend, it can do the braking for me. But first of all, just got to nudge the car forward. From the outside, you'll be able to see those wheels just lifting ever so slightly. So I'm just guiding the car through using the brakes and you can feel it coming over now, lifting that rear wheel quite dramatically up into the air. From in here, we barely notice. From the outside, you can really see what's going on. As we come down, I can take my feet away from the controls. Hill descent will guide me down onto the flat. Absolutely effortlessly, no problems at all. So creeping forward again, lifting the rear wheel up into the air and just guiding the car over the obstacle here. But I mean, from a driver's point of view, as you can see, I'm not working hard. I'm just allowing the car to climb through using just a little bit of brake just to ease it through nice and slowly and comfortably so that we don't get bounced around. Uh, the water here today, around 50 centimetres, so uh, should, uh, should show us exactly what Evoke is capable of doing. All I need to do, feet away, lower the car in nice and slowly, and then just a little acceleration, just starting to build a little bit of a bow wave, and just moving the car through nice and steadily, generating that wave there, keeping the car in motion as we climb through, and that's just helping to move some of the water out of the way, lower it around the critical components of the car, and the car, as you can see, just climbs through, no problems at all. A little bit of a, uh, a descent into the uh, obstacle here. So again, just using the uh, brakes to lower the car in nice and slowly. So uh, quite steep, as you can see. And then as we start to come down, again, taking my feet away, allowing the hill descent control to take over. And now we're going to start to turn to the left and uh, just put the car onto a gentle side slope. Feels a little bit weird as we climb up like this. Uh, but the car will travel through quite happily. Feels odd, but no bother, no difficulties at all. I'm going to open my window and have a closer look at just how close I am, goodness. Indeed. Starting the climb out now, uh, obviously you've got your window open, so do take care in case we uh, do throw any uh, mud and things around, but uh, you should be all right. So just gently starting to move. A little bit of wheel slip there as that front left wheel lifts into the air. So just gradually applying the accelerator, easing the car forward, and it simply climbs up. No hassle, no difficulties at all. And you can feel it just put that wheel down, lift the rear wheel up slightly into the air, and just traction control working to balance the power around between the wheels and the car just climbs through. Just climbing onto the rollers here, you can probably see on the outside front wheel starting to come onto the rollers there and with just one wheel on the roller the car has no problems at all, the other three wheels keep us moving but as we get both left hand side wheels of the car onto those rollers you can see it start to struggle slightly as those wheels spin and all I need to do is just give it a little bit of acceleration, just allow the traction control to balance the power between the left and right hand side of the vehicle and you can see it pulls forward almost as if those rollers aren't there. You take one look at this and think there is no way a car is going to go up there. But uh, with a nice line and a uh, bit of help from the Evoque, we should be able to clamber through this very, very easily. Just using a touch of throttle, just guiding the car in nice and slowly, not too fast, and just enough for momentum to keep us moving up the hill. And uh, it'll clamber in quite happily. And as we approach now, starting to uh, lift up on the right-hand side, which means it's lowering the left-hand side. And uh, you'll feel it just, and probably see it from the outside, just starting to break traction a little bit as those wheels lift off the ground. So again, just a small amount of traction control, just easing the car forward and it will clamber up quite happily. So you can see that rear wheel right up in the air and yet no problems at all for the car. As I gradually apply the accelerator, traction control systems, you'll see it keep it turning and the system is just trying to balance the power between all the wheels. You feel it touch back down on the ground there. Again, a little bit of slip as the front left lifts into the air. Traction control eases us forward. You'll see that hopefully on the wheel as it bites with the brakes and it stops, spins, stops, spins as the car is balancing the torque around the wheels and it's as easy as that. Um, Alex will be taking us uh, through the terrain and um, no doubt scaring the life out of me in uh, a very short while. So let's jump in and uh, yeah, let's see what this car can do.
So of course we've got the terrain response, so uh, that's allowing us to configure the car for the different surfaces that we might be travelling over. I'm using the Mud and Ruts programme at the moment, so uh, absolutely ideal for the terrain. We've got that hill descent control feature, that's applying the brakes and lowering us down the hill nice and carefully. Uh, we've also got a permanent four-wheel drive system, um, and that is uh, constantly, uh, with the help of traction control, trying to keep a balance of power between the wheels. So uh, as we descend, hill descent control applying the brakes, lowering us down, but then as we climb, that traction control system and the uh, two-litre Ingenium diesel that we have and the nine-speed gearbox all working together, to help keep us moving across the terrain. So uh, Range Rover Evoque is uh, fixed height. Uh, we've got coil springs in here, which gives us a really good balance uh, between the on-road driving. We get a good level of comfort and control and a really nice feel as you drive the car on-road and also still allowing us to travel off-road. So uh, as you can feel, clambering over the tree roots here, the car does a really good job of uh, soaking up the worst of the bumps, keeping the wheels on the ground and keeping us moving through the terrain. Nice uh, little obstacle here, so uh, I'm just going to guide the car through nice and slowly. So uh, just guiding it over the edge nice and gently and uh, lifting that rear wheel up into the air, quite uh, interesting. But again, beautifully controlled. All we need to do is lower the car down the slope and it comes down quite happily. No bother, no difficulty at all. Lifting uh, a wheel slightly as we come through there, just as it uh, transitions from leaning to the left to leaning to the right. And, uh, all I'm doing is just gently easing the car around. One of the fantastic things about these cars is what little effort is required to negotiate terrain like this. Ample towing capability, 2,000 kilos, two tons, um, so uh, a very good size caravan and uh, you certainly more than your average trailer, so uh, very capable indeed uh, when it comes to uh, towing. Alex, it's a beautiful day here. Um, to be honest with you, I don't really want to end just on the, uh, the boring road track. <laughs> Shall we go straight up the hill and uh, yeah, go off into Why the not? beautiful sun? We'll pop it into grass, gravel, snow and we can climb the hill. So we're coming back now uh, down onto the tarmac uh, so we can uh, put the car back into its general programme. So to the left on the terrain response, it says special programmes off, hill descent control. Uh, releases and uh, goes off and we're back. 